Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of the newly rebranded Dev Parkour. I'm Brian Parks, and in this video, I want to talk about what is DevOps and DevSecOps, and why should you care? But first, if this is your first time uh, coming to the channel, welcome, I'm glad to have you, uh, but please do me a favor and click that subscribe button uh, so you can see more great content just like this. And with that, let's get on to DevOps and DevSecOps. Now, I will say right off the bat that pretty much every company has their own definition of what uh, DevOps or DevSecOps is, and they do it slightly differently. Uh, and that's not necessarily a, a dig on them, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, DevOps isn't a specific process. DevOps is a way of thinking about uh, how you do software development and operations. That's what DevOps uh, comes from, uh, software development and operations. Uh, and, but just so that we have a kind of a, a single definition, a kind of a starting point for our discussion, uh, let's pull up the, the definition on Wikipedia, or at least the current definition on Wikipedia. DevOps is a set of practices that combines software development, the dev, and IT operations, ops. It aims to shorten the system's development lifecycle and provide continuous delivery with high software quality. DevOps is complementary with Agile software development, and several DevOps aspects came from Agile methodology. So let's unpa unpack that a little bit. So the first thing is that, is that it has to do with the systems development lifecycle or the software development lifecycle. So without software development, you really don't have DevOps. DevOps is the way of bridging the gap between traditional software development activities, you know, writing code, maybe even testing code, and uh, bringing it to the operational realm. So deployment, monitoring, uh, those sorts of, of disciplines, uh, which may have traditionally been uh, an, uh, specifically an IT task. So in older development shops, you might have engineers who write the code, and then when they're done, for whatever that definition is, whatever, whatever uh, they mean by done, they kind of throw it over the fence to an operations team, uh, usually in, in IT, uh, that then deploys it to whatever infrastructure it needs to be deployed to, sets up database servers, sets up networking, routing, all of that stuff. Um, and if they run into issues, then they throw that information back over the fence and it kind of goes back and forth. And uh, potentially there's this long uh, feedback cycle. The idea of Agile is all about short feedback cycles. So obviously that, that doesn't really fit into the Agile paradigm. But having... Uh, both of those groups even be a single group, but at least bringing them closer together and have them work on their uh, respective pieces uh, continuously and have that continuous feedback means that when the engineers are done writing the code, uh, at least it's guaranteed ready to be deployed. And in some cases, it is actually deployed, right? Uh, some agile methodologies uh, have as part of their definition of done that it, it is not done until it is deployed. You know, continuous delivery, continuous deployment is part of the definition of done. Uh, and that's kind of the second part of this definition. So we talked about systems development lifecycle, software development lifecycle. Next piece is continuous delivery. Uh, and that's really key to DevOps. Uh, if you can certainly do some DevOps activities if you're not uh, doing continuous delivery, um, which it might not be deploying two systems, it might be building an installer that is, is shippable. You can send that to, to your customers, or it's even you know immediately available for download on your website or something like that. Uh, continuous delivery uh, might look slightly different depending on, on what piece of software you're actually working on. Uh, but without that continuous delivery piece and getting to that continuous delivery piece, you're not really fully engaging in DevOps. DevOps is not just about getting engineers to work together and uh, doing, say, continuous integration. Continuous integration is good, and you should absolutely do it, but just doing continuous integration doesn't mean you're, you're doing DevOps or participating in DevOps or, uh, you know, have, have a DevOps culture or however you want to describe it. And then the third aspect of, of this definition on Wikipedia is software quality. Uh, it's not enough to just uh, run your build your code, run your code on some automated schedule, 
and uh, even if you're doing continuous deployment, you do need to have some uh, some level of testing. So, so unit testing, integration testing, uh, automated UI testing, something along those lines uh, to really fill in kind of the, the content of, of what's actually going on when your whole DevOps stuff is, is, is happening. Now, in some cases, people talk about DevSecOps, not just DevOps, but DevSecOps. Uh, and unsurprisingly, the sec in the middle refers to security. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to specifically say you're doing DevSecOps uh, in order to have some security built into your DevOps culture or pipeline. Uh, you can certainly run, you know, scans and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but really, the, the the driving force behind DevSecOps as a specific thing that's even on top of DevOps is that those security uh, disciplines, those security uh, activities are being pushed further and further to the left. So it's not just something you run uh, once you have a, a final built installer, you install it on a system and then run some security scans on it. Again, that's good. You should absolutely do that, even if you're doing DevSecOps, but that is, that's not enough in, in the eyes of, of the DevSecOps world. Uh, what DevSecOps does is pushes that further into the pipeline. Uh, closer to where the development activities are happening. So uh, as, a, as a first stab at that, you might start doing those scans, uh, either static analysis or even, uh, um, I lost the word, uh, the, the other kind, not static, uh, dynamic, I suppose, um, running that as, as part of your pipeline. So as soon as you have a built uh, binary, you run your, your scans, uh, or even before you build the installer, you run the scans as part of this automated pipeline. Moving that even uh, further, you might build security testing into your uh, tests, into your unit tests and that sort of thing. Uh, and the, the closer you get down to the code, the more you've, you're pushing this further and further to the left and it's be starting to become part of the culture of software engineering uh, and not just something that is done to the code. It, be, it becomes kind of, you know, part of your development efforts. And that might even translate into uh, dedicated uh, security training for software engineers. Uh, most of us, you know, even with a computer science degree, we don't learn a whole lot of security related stuff. Uh, it might be different now, but when I went to school, I didn't learn, I don't think I learned any security related stuff other than, hey, watch out for SQL injection. Um, there's a lot more to security than just watching out for SQL injection. Uh, the OWASP top 10 is a great place to start, but there are lots of great resources on uh, software development security um, and secure engineering, secure development, network security. You know, there's a whole, whole plethora of, of uh, activities involved in security. So getting that training for your developers so that the developers don't, uh, you know, security doesn't have to be something you tack on at the end. Uh, and I've said before, and I'm sure I'll say again, and lots of other people say this as well, security is not a feature. You should not be writing a user story that says, make my code secure, or even as a user, I want this system to be secure. No, that, no, that's not how you should be doing that. When you're writing the code, you should be writing secure code from the very beginning so that you don't have to uh, fix vulnerabilities later on down the road. Absolutely, scan your code, uh, have automated tools look for vulnerabilities in the code that you have written, but the goal should be that those tools don't find anything, not because they're misconfigured or anything, but because you haven't written those vulnerabilities in. Uh, so it's a lot easier to fix the vulnerabilities before you write them as you're thinking through your design and as you're writing the code, then sending it through one of those tools, having a vulnerability pop up, and then having to go back and fix it. That's a lot more costly, um, can introduce bugs, you know, all those sorts of things. Uh, the same uh, mantra that, that goes for, you know, uh, fixing a bug earlier in the process is significantly less uh, expensive and it becomes exponentially more expensive the longer uh, and the, the, the closer to a customer it gets, 
Same thing goes for security vulnerabilities. The closer a security vulnerability makes it to the customer, the more expensive it is to fix. And, you know, especially if it, if it leads to a breach, you know, forget about it. You're talking crazy expense. So, more of the story, DevOps, good. DevSecOps, even better. Um, DevSecOps is, is definitely something that, that you should be doing um, because ultimately it will make your life as a software engineer easier. Uh, it shortens the feedback cycle. Uh, it makes you, it, it gives you an opportunity to be more engaged in all aspects of the software. Uh, you know, going through testing, you know, quality assurance, uh, down to the customer, you know, all through the process. Uh, and in my opinion, that's, that's, that's what excites me as a software engineer is, is really getting to see the software go through its journey and seeing people use it uh, at the end and understanding how people use it and making sure that they have the best experience possible. Uh, and in my mind, Dev, DevOps and DevSecOps is really the way to do that. So I hope you enjoyed that, that discussion on DevOps and DevSecOps. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button down below. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, definitely please consider doing so and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when, when the next video gets released. And share this with, with development teams. Uh, there's still a lot of places that uh, are kind of new to DevOps or new to DevSecOps or may, may not be new but want to do it better, want to, want to make sure that they're doing all they can to make their, the software uh, the, the best the best they possibly can. Uh, so if you think there's something useful in what I've said uh, for your organization or friends, colleagues, uh, side projects, you know, open source projects, open source projects do DevOps and DevSecOps all the time. Um, it's a also a lot more visible. So if you're looking for an example, go check out your favorite open source project and see if they have a, uh, you know, a, a CICD pipeline and if they're doing some sort of security scans. Um, they may be, and it might be a great example for you to follow. So go ahead and share this with uh, pretty much anyone in, in the world in, of software engineering. I, I'm sure anyone can benefit from, from doing more in the DevOps space. I know I certainly can, even though I'm, you know, I made a video on it, but I still have lots to learn, and there's lots that's changing and lots that's improving in DevOps and DevSecOps. So with that, I'm going to stop rambling, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.